thinking about the younger generations of gay men who have come through the world since this crisis really was at its peak, you know, I hear you saying, you know, so many more behaviors are normalized. They're no longer afraid to touch each other. They're no longer afraid of the virus in the same way that we your were. cohort was 30 years ago, and rightfully so, right? There have been yes. so many advances. And I wonder about, you know, what are you seeing in terms of the way that um, younger gay men are relating to this condition? What is the, What are the fears about it in today's world, if any? And I, how is it part of the nomenclature and conversation? I'm not seeing, I'm seeing lots of stigma. Okay. You will go on the apps. Hi, what's up? Oh, I'm just hanging out. Are you clean? Mm. Right there, are you clean is a stigma. Mm -hmm. Intimating that if I'm HIV, I'm dirty. Exactly. So that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing as a psychologist, a lot of it actually surprisingly mm -hmm. that people will go oh well if you're not clean i can't play with you mm -hmm. well you know something this is my message to all of you out there i would rather know that someone is positive in telling me the truth that's on medication that's undetectable that can't give me anything rather than someone say oh no i don't have it i'm clean that may be lying to you that may be infected and be detectable and end up giving you the virus. So what you're saying, if I hear you right, is mm -hmm. that when we stigmatize people based on sexual health status, right, what we're really doing is forcing this conversation more and more underground. Yes. Because people want to be intimate, they want to be connected, they want to be sexual. Yes. And when they feel like they are, you know, untouchable or contaminants, which is what shaming really leads yes. to, it can cause the desperation for connection and intimacy to ferret its way out through being deceptive, which then perpetuates a lot of people getting unknowingly potentially um, infected. With HIV yeah. and other, th other things. And other things too, right. People, that's another thing. The younger people forget, oh yeah, I can take my PrEP mm -hmm. and that will prevent you from getting HIV 99.98% of the time. But syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, let's herpes, go to herpes, hepatitis, HPV. HPV, that little pill doesn't work. Right. And, his, and this is what I hear. Well, that's not going to kill me. I can get it treated. Mm. What they forget, we have now antibiotic resistant mm -hmm. gonorrhea and syphilis. Right. Meaning that even when you take the prescribed medication, you still have it. Yeah, so the things that once were treatable and curable sometimes are not anymore. Correct. Right. So, you know, in thinking about sex education for young people and older people, I think one of the things I'm hearing is that we still have a lot further to come in our ability to disseminate information in a way that is not shaming of anyone and really just sort of accepting that everyone has a different palette of um, health and wellness that yes. they're coming to the table with and when we talk about it openly and we can have the conversation it really is in my opinion part of the informed consent contract that is what should be happening in any kind of sexual encounter mm -hmm. regardless of who the people are participating yes and you know I will tell the your audience that I have sexual encounters I'm, I'm single and when I meet somebody, I don't just jump on them. Right. I'd like to have a conversation, mm -hmm. not negotiating, because when you start negotiating, it becomes plastic, mm -hmm. it becomes fake. Right. Right. We like spontaneous, every human being likes spontaneous interactions, intimacy. So to say, to, to, to sit there and just jump on somebody after a minute is not reasonable, no matter how hot I think the guy is. <laughs> but what I will do, mm -hmm is I'll say, so, you know, my name is Jim, and, and you know, this and that, and, and uh, what are you into, and everything. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm a bottom, I'm a top, mm -hmm. and I only go for men that are bottoms. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, oh, okay, that's cool, but, uh, you know, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I said, not to put you off, I said, whatever answer you give me, I'm not gonna be put off. You have to say that first yeah. before you ask any questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you tell me you have something, whatever it is, 
I'll be, I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, well, I'm HIV positive, but I'm undetectable. I'm like, okay. And they're like, really? I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm fine. They're sort of shocked. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, well, I'm HIV negative. You're not afraid? I said, you're undetectable. What's there to be afraid of? Mm -hmm. And they get this big smile on their face because I haven't shamed them. Mm -hmm. You can ask for information without going, oh my, oh, oh really? Right. The, the body language. That's so big. I think, yes. you know, so often we're not aware of our own biases. And I think a lot of people are not trying to be shaming. They're not trying to be hurtful. No. But they're driven by fear because we don't have a lot of honest information out no, there. No, we don't. That is accessible and available and doesn't come with a clout of, oh gosh, am I even a bad person for wanting to have this information? So I think when, when fear is the guidepost here, we're talking about our own personal safety. And when we don't know what we don't know, things get really scary. Yes. And that can create a lot of unintentional bracing responses or pulling back responses. And that is really subtly and implicitly impactful to our, our, our partner's mm -hmm. nervous system. And it creates already this sort of like distancing and fear. We also have our little body cues. As you know, it's, we're, she's a therapist, I'm a psychologist. I'm a psychologist too. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, because I, <laughs> I see therapists. You're all over the place as a therapist. Hmm. But as you know, uh -huh. the body language, like when you go, oh, I'm HIV positive. Oh, yeah, right. even a little, you, you back up. Yeah. Or you, your, your legs get close together. You go like this, like keeping to yourself, like somebody's it's, gonna it's protective. protect it. Yeah. And, um, and what I do is like, I'll actually go, oh, well that's fine with me. Mm. I reach out. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I says, well, you equals you. Mm -hmm. Undetectable equals untransmissible. So you're a hottie, <laughs> you know, and you reach out to give that assurance. Right, right. But a lot of people without the information go, oh, Oh, well, oh, I'm fine with it. And you see them going like this, or, <laughs> they, you know, and it's like, well, you're saying you're fine with it, but your body language is going, no, I'm not fine with Your it. body's looking for the closest, for the closest door. door. Yeah.